In this section we'll be working on the boiler for the locomotive and it stretches from the cab to the front end here and it's a cylinder. Now in order to have some support for that cylinder we're going to cut some circles out of medium weight chipboard. These are listed on the cutting guide as the boiler supports and they're listed as three inch circles now I used this die by Tim Holtz, it's called Sized Circles, and the largest circle on here is just a hair under three inches. So if you don't have that die, <coughs> excuse me, and you need to cut your circles by hand, just uh, things have been sized so they're just a hair under three inches you might be able to see that there's just a little bit of space if I put them here on my gridded mat. So uh, we need to, in order to get the circles to fit around this base, we need to do some cutouts. Uh, some of the circles need to have a uh, an opening that comes open at the bottom and some will just have a uh, square opening so they fit on this end. The ones that fit down here closer to the cab uh, need the bottom part removed. So in order to cut those uh, mark for those circles, I mean sorry, cutouts that are uh, an inch and three quarters wide, you have uh, two ways you can go about it. If you have a template like I have here. This one has a three inch and you can definitely see on this one or at least I can in this lighting that the circles are a little bit smaller than the three inch on this template. But I've just used some temporary tape here to attach both my template and one of the circles to the to a piece of white paper to hold everything stationary and then I can use my ruler to mark the template has uh, halfway marks on it and then once those are on there I know that if I need something that is an inch and seven eighths that I need to draw a line on that is seven eighths from the center mark so I can just come in here and line up my ruler with those guidelines making sure I keep everything nice and square and now I've marked an inch and three quarter inch square that is centered in that circle and then I'll just cut that out now if you don't have a template like this you can use your gridded mat and just center I'll move this a little closer to me center your circle in there and then you can use the lines on the mat to do the same process that we just did I'll just draw my center marks and then once I have those centering marks uh, drawn, I can just again mark 7 eighths inch from both sides to make my interior square. So that's two ways to go about doing that. So we need uh, circles that have a square cut out and then circles that have basically a rectangle cut out they look like that where we just remove the bottom section from one side now you can once you make a one of your templates designate it as the master you can see I've written an M on this one here that I've already done so that I can use that to uh, as a guideline so I don't have to go through all that measuring each time. Now if you do that and you 
uh, draw with your line here, remember you'll want to cut just on the outside of that line that you draw in order to have your uh, the dimensions correctly because these are pretty small joins here so that when you go to slip this over here you can't really force it. It needs to be sized correctly or else these small uh, joins right here would be in danger of tearing. So I'm going to get my pieces cut and then I'll be back. So I have all of my pieces cut now and I have five that are this shape and nine that are uh, with the square cut out of the center. And I also have cut off a little piece that is just basically the bottom section here of one of these pieces that I'll show you what that's used for. Now I've cut this many because I want to double up and I just find that gives me more gluing surface. It really didn't take all that much time to, to cut them out. So um, if you've seen any of my projects, you'll know I'm kind of a, a belt and suspenders kind of person. So I'd rather uh, have a little more structure and not be concerned about it than not have enough and wish that I had taken the time to do uh, something extra. So. Obviously, uh, doubles, that there's five here and nine here, um, that's not quite even. So that's because right here where this dividing line is, one side of the double is on the side with the box and the other side is on the front and slips on here. So I'm going to do some glue ups in sets of two and when I do the glue up I'm going to use this base to help me keep everything square and what I mean by that is that I'll take my glue put it on one piece slide that piece down and I've already tested all these to make sure that they slide on here fine and I'll slide another one on and then I'll bring them together give that a good squish if you want to you can put some clothespins on I'm going to just slide it back a little you can see I have a little glue leakage here because I'm not ready to glue these in position yet I just want to use this as kind of a form for getting them together. So I'll do, got two to make that are like this, and then the one that I explained that goes here in the, in the center that has one of each, and then the remaining eight will make into four. Um, and again, I'll form those around the front here the same way I did this and just allow those to set up for a few minutes and then I'll be back. So I have all of my double thicknesses made and I have them placed approximately where I want them to go. But before we talk about gluing them on, uh, this one little piece that's here, I'm going to put it on this edge Hopefully you can see it. This is the one that's right in front of the box so that we have a double uh, layer right here to uh, glue the boiler to. So I'm just going to put a little, little glue on this piece. and put that right there to double that up. Okay, so placement of these. One is going to go directly against the back of the cab here and get glued to the cab as well as to the uh, box side. Then of course this one that goes that is straddling the box and the boiler extension 
will go right along that line. This one just goes somewhere in between. It's not critical where it goes. Then on the front, the very front one is going to go right on the edge, but we're not going to glue that one yet. These two will straddle the hole where we put our dowel in, so just put your dowel back in there to get that spacing. And we want to make sure we keep these all of these straight. Uh, so I'm going to draw some guidelines. Uh, I forgot to say this one can just go somewhere in between uh, the one that straddles the box and the one that's behind the dowel. It's not critical where it goes. So that's where they're going to go. So what I'm going to do is just draw some lines that go across the top and then down the two sides to give me some straight lines to put a bead of glue on and then I'll just slide each one into position. So I've come back before gluing up just to show you those lines that I've drawn and up here at the front they straddle the dowel hole and they just continue down on the sides. This one here is just kind of centered, it's a little bit closer to the front, doesn't matter. And this one back here is just kind of be between them. But I have a guideline now to put glue on and to make sure I keep them all straight as they go in place. So, I'll get that glue up done now and then I'll be back. One more thing I wanted to say is that when you're putting these on that slide over, make sure you push them down tight against the top of the box here and that you hold some pressure on the sides here. And here you can see where I've got my grip right there so that they stay tight against that box and get set up that way. The ones that have a square in them um, it, they fit right over the end here so you don't have to be as uh, vigilant about this but these you want to make sure that they are down tight against the top of the box and that you're holding it here and here with a good grip until that sets up and as you can see I'm just working my way forward here when I get to the two that are around the dowel hole I'll put that dowel in there so that I can make sure that they are snug up against the dowel but make sure to twist that dowel so that um, it doesn't get glued or attached to those two pieces. I have all of my pieces glued on now and while I'm waiting for that glue to set up I'm going to get prepared to put the boiler on and I've got a piece here of lightweight chipboard and I have it oriented so that it's curving this way. If you pick it up there's one way it wants to curve and one way it doesn't want to curve. So put and then I'm going to score it every eighth of an inch and you want to just take your time, and this is a good time to do it while that glue is setting up, and score every eighth of an inch. Uh, for the boiler, we're going to need a piece uh, that is not quite as big as this, but we can use the leftovers for some of the other parts of the locomotive. So go ahead and get that piece all scored at one eighth inch, and then uh, once the glue is dried on our locomotive, we can be back to fit the boiler on. Now I need to measure to see how long to cut our piece of scored chipboard. And so what I'm going to do is just hold a piece of spare chipboard up here at the end and measure from the cab and look at what that measurement is underneath that piece of chipboard and I'm going to repeat that on three sides here it's eight inches up here on the top it's eight inches 
And over here, it's eight inches as well. Now, yours may be slightly different. Um, hopefully not, but if it is, just adjust that you want the length of that we cut the piece of scored chipboard to end up coming from the cab directly to line up with the end of the boiler extension here. So uh, my length is going to be 8 inches, that's along the score line. And then the width, we know these circles are 3 inches in diameter, uh, circumference of a circle, uh, pi d, which is a pi times 3 inches, it's about 9.5 inches. I'm going to cut my piece about 10 inches wide just to have a little uh, playroom. So that'll be 8 by 10. And then I'm just going to roll it into a, a tube um, and hold it there for a few minutes to kind of train it to want to be in a circular a shape. And then I'll be back and we can carry on. So I'm back. You can see here's my piece of chipboard that I've cut to 8 inches long. It's the length of the boiler here. And I've got it wrapped into a circle that's about an inch and a half or so. Um, this lightweight chipboard, well, especially once it's scored, will roll very easily. I debated about several different kinds of construction for the boiler portion of the locomotive. But I finally decided this is the way I preferred to do it. So, um, uh, so that's why we have to have a few extra supports because this is just light, lightweight chipboard. Okay, so before we go to attach it, we need to make a line here because we're going to need to uh, punch a hole in it for our dowel support here. And so on this front piece, I already have a line because this just happens to be the piece that I, I drew my original square on. But if you don't have a line, um, you know, that was just serendipitous for me. So what I'll do, you can do is just look for the center of this, of this hole. And then make sure you have a line that you can see right here on the front because we'll use that little tick mark to mark our uh, placement to punch the hole for the uh, dowel here. Okay, so here's our boiler and it's trained to want to go nicely around here now. And what's going to happen here is we're going to start by fitting it around. I'm going to work from left to right here. We'll fit it around here. We're obviously going to have to cut out a piece that goes around the base here. And we want to make sure that we keep this straight going across to the front here. So what we can do is just take a ruler or something, probably best to go this way, just come right along the edge of the, the cube there and just come straight down make a line that you can continue onto the bottom so that you can see so that when I come across here, pretend this is my paper, I'll have a, a tick mark up there that I can uh, used to line up up with. Now I don't think we need one on the other side but as long as I'm here I'll just draw that. It might come in handy. Okay so we have our tick mark here that we can aim for. And now we're ready to do a little dry fit. So to do the dry fit got a couple of pieces of blue tape here. You can see that's that low tack kind of uh, painter's tape. I'm making sure that I have this flush against the cab and right against 
a box here and then I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on there to hold that and then come down here and look for my tick mark make sure that those are on there pretty securely if when we take them off it takes off a little bit of the chipboard it's no worries we're going to cover that with paper of course and so then I'm kind of coming along pretty pretty forcefully against the supports here so that I'm getting a nice tight fit and the first thing I want to look for is right here where my tick mark is and transfer that tick mark to the inside and just kind of look at this this seam where it's meeting here especially from where we should have it down here at the bottom and tight up there to where that tick mark is okay and I'm just checking all that out double checking that looks good so I'm going to take this partially off here now we know that when we punched this hole originally it was one inch from the center I'm sorry one inch from this edge to the center of the hole and since we sized our uh, piece of score chipboard to be the same length there we can go ahead and mark that placement one inch in from the edge and then I'm just going to continue that tick mark up so that I have a place to punch my hole and then I'll get my punch out and Go ahead and punch that. Now if it doesn't end up being exactly where you want it to be, the world isn't going to come to an end because paper will cover that up. But you know, we want to do it as close to possible as we can. Let's see what I've got here. Looks pretty good coming around there. So I'm going to just, that's kind of too long a dowel. I don't have a shorter piece handy. If I did, I would use it. But that kind of helps hold, the, hold it in place there. And now the next thing I want to do is look for where, let me use a pencil, where does the box meet this curve? And I'm going to, sorry, I don't think I can get this on camera here. I'm going to get the light on here. Now I'm going to cut it a little bit long to begin with because, you know, you can always cut off more, but you can't add more on. So what I'm doing is I made a little line here along the edge of the box. And then I saw where this should meet, and I just kind of moved up one of the scores from that. And so what's going to happen is we're going to remove this piece back here up to that tick mark. So, let me get this dowel out of here for a second. Now I'm just going to come right along one of the pieces, the score lines here. Uh, it helps keep it straight. And then I don't 
along that line that I made. Alright, now we can test this. I'll stick my dowel back in here. And now I can more easily see what's happening here. And I can get a better idea of, of what the more accurate um, place to cut that will be. You can see here, if I can get my finger out of the way, that I'm a little bit over. So you just, you know, it's kind of a trial and error here. Just cut it, you know, you might want to just cut off another little bit. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's easier to cut it off in small pieces and that way you don't do too much. So I'm going to cut off two more lines here. I think it's going to take three, but I'd rather cut off two. Okay, new blade in here. And when you have that dowel in, in the right place, you should feel it kind of get seated in there. Around here. Yeah, I'm going to take off just one more. So you'll experiment and see exactly where that should come. I'll measure this in a second and tell you how much I ended up cutting off, but you may have uh, need a different amount. So my piece started out being 10 inches in uh, length there, and I've cut off Oh, about two and a half, so. All right. And then, of course, this piece is going to come around the bottom. should meet up square here. Now I'm just checking around the inside here to make sure it's good and tight up against there. And then I can see, this is another benefit to having the score lines in there, is I can see where that's going to meet and that's going to give me a guide. I'm going to look out here on the outside and it should be this score line. Hopefully those are the same two score lines. And then I'll be able to trim that off. So I'm going to trim that off and then I'll be back. So here you can see that I have trimmed this off. These two pieces are meeting exactly. If I pull that apart you can see that that's where it is. And this is our original side. Over here I have a tiny bit of gap. But don't worry about gap, it'll get covered up. So, um, yeah, so now uh, we're going to, and then I'm going to split this boiler section into two videos. And in the next video, we'll uh, attach this piece of chipboard to the base construction and add our pattern paper.